Welcome back, seedlings. Now, I don't say that the way that Summer usually says that, but <laughs> hey, it's the same thing no matter what. We are grateful that you have tuned in, that you're listening to us. Last couple of weeks, we have focused on lordship and salvation, right? Uh, we distinguish that like salvation is a free gift. It's something that God does uh, for us that we can't do for ourselves and all that kind of stuff, but we still need to make him Lord of our life. That's what we do for him, right? Now, here's the interesting thing with this summer. The minute we make him Lord of our life, right? And that means we've removed ourselves from making somebody else Lord, right? Whether that's ourselves, but more importantly, uh, the enemy of God, right? And what happens is, you know, that, that we all of a sudden put ourselves in the crossfire, mm -hmm. right? Because we've decided that we're no longer going to follow the things of this world, right? We're not going to make the Lord of this world uh, our Lord. We're going to make the Lord of heaven, the rightful Lord of this world our Lord. So again, the enemy is not, he does not want us to be saved, that's for sure. He doesn't want us uh, to have a salvific moment, right? Mm -hmm. now, he will do everything he can to stop that. However, even when that happens, so we would tend to think like, shoo, all right, I, I made it to Jesus. Now the enemy's going to leave us alone, right? <laughs> uh, there's a lot of evidence in the Bible that says the enemy never leaves us alone, mm -hmm. right? We choose to make Jesus Lord, and all of a sudden we have an enemy who's very upset with that. So uh, we wanted to take a few minutes and we wanted to talk to our listeners about knowing your enemy, right? Now, again, we're just kind of working through this a whole bunch of us together, right? We've been having some discussions, some talks about this. So it's kind of an evolving thing that's kind of finding its way into different episodes, right? But I want, I want you to uh, explain maybe to the listeners, when, when we talk about know your enemy as a Christian, right, mm -hmm. exactly what are we talking about or who are we talking about? Well, you know, Satan. Excellent. The demon monsters, I call them. The minions, the bad guy, the Ten. opposite of God. All the things. Fill us in a little bit on how how did Satan get to be, who is he, and why does he hate God so much? Well, Satan was, is, was, is an angel. Okay. Right? He rebelled against God. Mm -hmm. He took a whole bunch of angels with him. Yeah. Like a third, right? A third of heaven. Third of, a third of heaven, somehow. Took him, took them with him, and he decided to rebel against God because he wanted to be... Like God, mm -hmm. right? He mm -hmm. thought that he could be like God and he could have the power that God had. So he's been spending this whole time trying to just go against God, mm -hmm. right? And just destroy everything that God has has planned and everything that God is doing. And he just wants to be God. So we, so we have an enemy who mm -hmm. tried to be God, mm -hmm. right, instead of worship God. Mm -hmm. And that got him thrown out of heaven, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Now, rather than just kind of licking his wounds, going off and yeah. doing his own thing, now he's got this vendetta mm -hmm. against God. He knows he can't beat God. Right. So who does he take this out on? Well, God's, God's favorite thing. God's creation, mm -hmm. right? God's loved ones. Mm -hmm. He wants to destroy anything that he can that God loves. So, again, it's it's funny because most of us can relate to that in some way, shape, or form. We've dealt with a situation where somebody's really mad at us, but mm -hmm. what they've attempted to do is destroy everything around yeah. us. Because Steal they your dog, you know. Yeah, they can't come to <laughs> us, right? They can't, they can't, right, they right, can't right. take us out of the equation, so they're going to mm -hmm. take everything else out of the equation. Equation, right yep. so when we're looking at the basics so seeds is yes. you know the basics of christianity like we this is something that we just kind of somehow always assume people just know hey there's an enemy out there right right but we don't spend a lot of time really thinking about the enemy right we don't spend a lot of of time saying like in the 80s uh there was a saying that that was well the devil made me do it mm -hmm. right and so we just started blaming everything on on the devil right and again there's a lot of things that happen happened in life that the devil didn't have anything to do with satan didn't have anything to do with right now again he's marring up creation right mm -hmm. he's been from the very beginning trying to wreak havoc in god's creation right yep. so we know that that really when it comes to people we we start out our right introduction to to satan 
in Genesis chapter 3, yeah. right? So it's funny. Genesis chapter 1, creation story. Fantastic. Genesis chapter 2, creation story. Fantastic. You would hope that there would be a few chapters in between. <laughs> but there's not, mm -hmm. right? So we got Adam walking around. God looks at Adam, says, hey, you need some help. So he makes a helpmate. So we got Eve walking around in this garden, right? They're just loving life. Everything's great. Everything's yeah. perfect. They got long life, right? They've got health. They've got animals. They got animals where the lion and the lamb are, are together and they're not eating each other. Well, I guess the lamb doesn't eat the lion anyway, but the lion <laughs> isn't eating the lamb, right? Right. No, no fear, right? Whether there were dinosaurs, all that good stuff we can talk about and really get into. But in the midst of this utopia, right? In the midst of all of this, the enemy shows yep. up in Genesis chapter 3. So why don't you read a few verses of Genesis chapter 3 uh, for our listeners, right? Probably this is going to be familiar to them. If it's not, it'll be great. Yes, the serpent. So right in the beginning of three, it says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Yeah. So Oops. Super helpful enemy that we have. Mm -hmm. Right. Again, looking to undo and destroy. Yeah. A couple things stick out to me, and then and then add on to that, and and make this make this a, a little bit bigger. Right. Yep. Well, the first thing that the enemy really does is he says, "Did God really say that?" Yeah. Right. So the enemy uh, is constantly getting us to question. Right. Mm -hmm. Truth. Is that really what God said to us? Right. He. I mean, he twists scripture. Anything that God said, he he. You'll see it all throughout the Bible. He twists it just a little. Yep. Like enough that you could read it and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, he's right. Mm -hmm. But it's funny that in this temptation, right, what does he, by, by nature, whether it's even either God says, hey, here's the rules, here's what you have to do, right, to tempt people, mm -hmm. or whether it's just the way he is, it doesn't seem to really matter. He has to acknowledge truth because mm -hmm. all truth is, is truth. But what he gets us questioning is, did God really say that? Well, right. that gives us an immediate out, doesn't it? Did God really say it? Go to God. Hey, God, did you really say? Yeah, it's like, no. It's See, it's not like, did he really say that at all? It's, he said it this way. Yeah. Like, he said that, but you, you're you off a little bit in mm -hmm. what he meant. Like, that's not exactly what he meant. He just doesn't want you to have this good stuff, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so again, notice that... The enemy, I like what you said there. The enemy is is kind of saying to Eve, hey, God's withholding from you. Mm -hmm. God's keeping you from some pretty good stuff, right? And so again, rather than Eve going and checking out the facts, Eve went with her feelings. Because then it says, well, she noticed the fruit was pleasing to so the eye. It was, it was good. good mm -hmm. Right? So all of a sudden she looks up and like, well, it looks good. It looks like all the other fruit and all the other trees. It looks like I, I should. So again, we, we get this in our life today, that the enemy is constantly saying to us, well, do you really, can you really not do that? Like, is it really going to hurt to cheat on your taxes a little right. bit? Is it going to really hurt to forge this or do this? Really and, that bad. But we look at the outcome and we see new car, new house, more money, all of the different things. And we go, yeah, right? Like, we, we, we lie to people because we want to potentially save a relationship or have yeah. a relationship, mm -hmm. right? That type of thing. But the last part there that, that really sticks out to me is that he, he then entices her with what he was enticed with. God knows that you're going to be like him, mm -hmm. which is exactly where he wanted to be, yeah. right? He wanted to be God, mm -hmm. so he's constantly enticing us to want to be God as well. Yeah, I think it's funny because he said, like, you'll, you'll know, you'll know good and evil, then you'll know all the things. Yeah. Because they didn't know evil. They didn't know what evil was. Yeah. They had no idea. Everything was perfect. But it was... It was true. Like, it was true. Then they knew evil. Yeah. Like, everything he said was true. Yep. yep. Right? Like, and they, they did that, and then, oh, suddenly they're naked. Yep. 
right? And they're like ashamed and they're hiding from God and they're acting like, you know, shameful. Exactly. Right? So it's like, oh, all of a sudden, yeah, oh, yeah, everything he said was true. It's like he twisted it, but kind of not. It's, it's, it's exactly right, which is like what? now you know all the things. Congrats. Don't you love it? Exactly. Knowing all the things? He introduced them mm -hmm. and the world to sin, right? Yeah, so not good. And, and, and they, they took that. So now, all of a sudden, they know what's right, what's wrong. Now they know about sin, yeah. right? The, the enemy is continually doing the same tactic with us, right? He's, he's constantly saying to us, did God really say that, getting us to question, right? So it doesn't matter whether it's the key big issues that churches and people and Christians fight with, you know, mm -hmm. the abortions, the, you know, those kind of things, or if it's the lying and the gossip. Did God really say that lying is wrong? Did God really say that gossip is wrong? Did, did he really say that you couldn't go up to somebody and say, hey, did you hear about Summer and Andy and, and Joe and, and Beth and and all these different people. Did he, did, he, did he really say that? Yeah. That's not how he meant it. No. No. And, and again, God said, yeah, I, I, I really did mean don't lie. Yeah. Yeah, I really did mean don't yeah, gossip. at all. Like, period. Even don't little slander. ones. Yeah. It, it, well, because exactly. God knows it. Like, okay, was eating fruit a bad thing? No. They, Told me they could have they, all the fruit they, they could wanted. have all the fruit. And they, didn't, they weren't eating animals at that time. They were, That's what they had to eat. Yeah. So, like, was God telling them, like, to do something that was... Like, it wasn't a bad thing. No. But he knows, like, okay, you fib a little bit on something. Is that is that in itself maybe bad? Maybe not. But God knows those little things grow and they fester and they turn into, like, a bigger and a bigger and a bigger and a bigger thing. So, like, some of the rules sometimes don't make sense. Right. Until after you break them. And then you're like, oh, <laughs> Now I get why this shouldn't have happened. Yeah. No. Nope. You know, but the enemy knows that stuff ahead of time. It's funny because we, we think of that when we talk about speeding. You know, we live in an area where there's a lot of deer, right? Mm -hmm. At night, there's a lot of animals. There's a lot of things, a lot of curvy roads. There's a lot yeah. of, you know, hills and things like yeah. that. And so, again, we look at the 55 and say, well, this is unrealistic. This is unreasonable. I'm in a hurry. Nobody else is on the road. Nobody's a It's straight. No big deal. Right. But but really, those rules are, are thought through by people who look at the road and say, hey, there's other variables you're not thinking like about. Like when a bear runs out in front of me. Exactly. Which has happened. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're looking at those things and saying, hey. Going 80. We need to uh, we need to be not hitting that bear at eighty, right? And so yeah. how do we how do we do that? Well, we look at the road and say, you know what, fifty five is pretty safe, forty is is safe at this moment here, right? It's also about kids and things like that. There's a bigger picture, mm -hmm. right? God sometimes is looking down, if not all the time, he's looking down. He sees the bigger picture, mm -hmm. and he says, yeah, you're not seeing this whole thing, right? Right. So again, it's it's not that lying. Right for you and and somebody else is is the whole picture. The whole picture is what that person does with the lie, right? What it does to you, the the path that it starts to make, so that well you'll lie again and lie again and again and again and again. Mm -hmm. So God God knows all these things, right? Yeah. But so does the enemy, right? The enemy knows our tendencies. He knows who we are. Right. right? So listen as we uh, as we start this whole thing out getting to know your enemy, right? We've started off, gone back to the basics, like mm -hmm. just to establish this week, uh, you have an enemy, right? The Bible says that you have an enemy. Mm -hmm. So you can be totally oblivious to him. You can never have heard about him. You can be in a way where you're not even aware there is one, but now you are aware and you're responsible for that truth because we've told you there is a real enemy. Uh, Summer, uh, in the next few weeks, we're, gonna, we're going to continue on with this discussion, right? Yep. All right, so close us out. Yeah, so like you said, guys, now you know who the enemy is, where he came from, how it started, um, and we're just going to dive a little deeper into, you know, Knowing what he looks like here in life, you know, he's not a talking snake in our life. <laughs> so you need to know on a daily basis what the enemy looks like in your life, in your mind, in your house, in your family, in your job, in your church, in your church. Yes, he's in your church, believe it or not. Um, so we'll dive a little deeper into how to actually recognize your enemy and how to study him because he is definitely studying you. So have a great week, seedlings. We love you. We'll see you next Monday.